How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host, Jesse Morgan, aka Slammerella, and today we have another review to do, this time of the band DeMolt. They are a black metal band from Burgas, Bulgaria, which is a very interesting place to have black metal come from. I don't think I have anything in my collection from Bulgaria, so that's very neat. This is their second full-length album called Apestima. It was released October 26th of last year, so 2019. And before this, they have a demo called Agri Somnia from 2007 and a full-length album from 2014 called Liberation Funeral. So, with that out of the way, we have 10 tracks that I had to review here, and they are roughly an hour and two minutes in length. The members of this band are... Asen on guitar, Wound Air, aka Monolith, on vocals, Rumen on guitars, Yavor on bass, and Stanimir on drums. As for the vocals, they were a good volume in the mix, about the same level as the guitar, and centered nicely, not like directly in the center, but just off where it needs to be in the mix. Anywho, they were performed well and consistently. The stylings of the vocals themselves were kind of a low-range demonic black metal vocal styling, and they were pretty crisp and powerful throughout the album. There are some slight variations throughout on songs like Sacrilege or Al Alethea, where in Sacrilege there is some kind of DSBM kind of streaky vocals, and in Alethea, there was some Ramstein-esque kind of growly spoken chanted parts. So it was neat to have those thrown in there to spice things up. Now for the guitar, they were a solid level in the mix and they were clearly defined, good tone, and even at times fairly beefy, which is odd to say for black metal, but there we are. There's a nice range of riffs, atmosphere, and there's good like guitar layered parts. There is some definite menacing chord progressions and some haunting overtones here and there. The riffs were dissonant. There was some tremolos going on, and there was definitely some kind of stop and go kind of crushing segments a la the song Sacrilege. Get your like grim face and invisible orange is ready for that for sure so all in all good vocals good guitar so far the bass was low in the mix but still audible which is nice it had a clean tone had a little bit of a, a clunky sound every now and then to it depending on what song you heard it was mostly just smooth and buttery flow though on point performed well it was a, a much welcomed low-end boost to the percussion and riffs that were composed throughout and it added a nice kind of foreboding existential oppressive feel to the songs so good job Yavor on bass as for the drums they were decently mixed slightly below the guitar vocals at times but well evened out through the left and right and the middle sections of the audio spectrum so Decent job on the mixing there. Good use of blast and euro beats in this as well. There are some good fills. The double kicks were pretty solid. This guy is obviously very talented. He's a diverse drummer. He is very articulate on the drums and pretty precise. It would probably be fair to say that he has got the stamina to last because these songs would definitely put the pressure on any drummer. There is even a section where it has quite the amazing and build up tension parts, i.e. the song The Martyr's Congregation. Yeah, all in all, really, really good drums. So some of my favorite tracks on this were number four, which is The Martyr's Congregation that I just mentioned. It had that great build up drum percussion part, some really good riffs, and it just kind of stood out amongst the rest of the tracks. The other pretty decent one was Scars of Seclusion. It was grimy and had some of those in-the-pocket kind of wrists that really got you headbanging and grooving to it. There was also a nice dichotomy of kind of like this epic feel to some of it and melancholic kind of feel. So it was a good 
back and forth between some of the styles throughout the song, and I enjoyed that. So yeah, number eight, Scars of Seclusion. But my favorite track on this album by far had to be track number three, and that is Sacrilege. It had some really crushing riffs, some incredibly haunting atmospheres here and there, and then the the nice sporadic inclusion of these depressive suicidal black metal vocal shrieks kind of coming in near the end of the song. It was a nice surprise, and I wish there was more of it for sure. So besides that, my overall thoughts on this is this is probably for fans of, let's say, late era Marduk, maybe Conjuration era Behemoth, and maybe some mid era Rotting Christ. I definitely hear some Kata Ia Tone, whatever the fuck that says. I don't speak Greek, but yeah. So it had some of that in it for sure. It's very atmospheric, as I kind of stated before. Very foreboding, and it had this overarching sense of dread throughout the album. It's unexpectedly heavy at times, too. Like, just when you're not expecting it, it just really amps up the level of chuggy and just pound you in the face style of riffs and it was just it was a nice pleasant surprise when that happened you're like oh yeah nice it caught your attention and definitely brought you back into it if your add was leading you astray <laughs> and once again like i said about scars of seclusion there every now and then has like this blackened melancholic amon amarth kind of moments throughout and it was very interesting and definitely added some some variety to what was going on in the album. It's a bit to sit through though, like the album is an hour and two minutes long. It definitely takes a little bit of a toll for multiple sessions if you're going to listen to it a few times. But besides that, there is a lots of little intricacies to discover throughout though. Upon multiple listens, there are things that you will hear in there that you didn't hear before. Let's talk about some of the, the improvements or weaknesses that this had. It's a bit long, like I said. It uh, definitely kept some tracks in this album that probably didn't add too much to make it better or, or increase the interest for it, i.e. songs like The Fall, Nether, and even The Hollow Man, which is unfortunate because that's a really cool song title. I don't know if lyrically it has anything to do with the hollow men from wraith marsh aka the those dead zombie spirit characters from the fable series but yeah cool title unfortunately the song didn't really have too much in it that really popped out at me and the the fall and the nether felt to me like just kind of filler tracks that could have easily just been left off of the album and made it a more quick concise experience some technical problems would be maybe the snare being kind of slightly soft here and there. I noticed throughout the album that it was, they didn't always have that problem, that it was like soft and not noticeable that much. I like to have not a, an, ob an obtuse kind of obnoxious kind of snare where it's just really in your face and overly just too much. But I like I like to have a solid present snare to keep the the dichotomy of the bass drum and the snare and the vocals and the guitars going on that it keeps the rhythm and marks that spot in the riffs and the composition. So a little bit more prominent snare here and there would be nice. Another thing that could have been making this even better for an album as maybe have more of those depressive suicidal black metal vocals that popped up in sacrilege because only having it in one song was definitely a tease and i and i really would have loved to hear more of that so yeah more dsbm vocals more of those kind of grimy in the pocket riffs that happened in scars of seclusion and the build up -y type of stuff that happened in martyrs congregation yeah more of that in the future would be awesome that's about it. But all in all, I still give this album a solid 8 out of 10. Highly recommend you check out DeMolt's Epistema album. The production was really good. The mixing was really good. Most of the ideas that were presented in it, composition-wise and vocal-wise, were talented and driving. And they definitely feel like they know what they're doing and have a direction they want to go. It just might have been better if there was a couple of songs left off to really drive the point home and really keep it a quick, concise album altogether. But yeah, really, really good. 8 out of 10. I'm Jesse Morgan, and I would buy this album. Check it out. And that's it. For Glory, for the Rebel Alliance, Slammerella out.